Hey everyone and welcome to this new class in Flight Instruments. Today we will discuss the gyroscopic instruments and analyze how they work. So first of all we need to understand what a gyroscope is and what the gyroscope effect means. So gyroscopes are used to keep track of how an aircraft is moving with respect to an initial orientation. So for instance throughout the acceleration phase during the takeoff of the aircraft, the aircraft will only be moving forward, but does not rotate. It is at the moment of takeoff, when the aircraft starts moving upward, that the aircraft will rotate with respect to the initial horizontal direction. In this case, we require gyroscopes to visualize how much the aircraft is actually rotating. So, how do gyroscopes work? Gyroscopes are based on a rotor which is always rotating with respect to the same axis. No matter how we spin the gyroscope frame or gimbal, the rotor will continue to rotate on the same spin axis. Now, this is due to the gyroscopic effect, meaning that in case we try to change the spin axis by tilting the rotor directly, for instance, we would perceive a force which is called precession which would counteract the change that we were forcing. So, in other words, to put it intuitively, it is in the nature of a rotating object, such as the rotor, to continue to rotate in the same axis, even if we try to disturb it. And this is what is known as the gyroscopic effect. So, with this in mind, we can quickly see that by moving only the gimbal, or the gyroscope frame, we won't be able to change the axis of rotation of the rotor. Or would it be, in other words, if an aircraft rotates, the rotor of the gyroscope will actually remain oriented in the same axis. So by measuring the difference between the axis of the rotor, which is the initial axis, and the rotation perceived by the gyroscope frame, or either the gimbal, we will be able to tell how much has the aircraft rotated. This is a quick example of the Kubli, which I found online, which is a cubic representation of what a gyroscope is. As you can see, by modifying the exterior conditions of the gyroscope, we actually see that the rotor, you know, the rotor of the gyroscope is actually on the same axis all the time, which is exactly what I tried to explain. Okay? Right, so in some aircraft, only in some aircraft, all the gyros are vacuum, pressure or electrically operated. In other aircraft, vacuum or pressure systems provide the power for the heading and attitude indicators, while the electrical system might provide the power for the turn coordinator. Okay, so it depends on the design of the aircraft itself. However, most aircraft have at least two sources of power, rather pressure, vacuum or electrical, to ensure at least one source of bank information is available if one power source fails, okay? So for redundancy. Right, so the vacuum or pressure system will spin the gyro by drawing a stream of air against the rotor vanes to spin the rotor at high speed. So much like the operation of maybe a water wheel or a turbine, okay? The amount of vacuum or pressure required for instrument operation varies, but is usually actually between 4.5 inches of mercury and 5.5 inches of mercury, okay, in my depend. Right, so a typical vacuum system consists of an engine-driven vacuum pump, a relief valve, an air filter, a gorge, and all the tubing necessary to complete the connections, okay. The gorge is mounted in the aircraft's instrument panel and indicates the amount of pressure in the system. Note that the vacuum is measured in inches of mercury less than the ambient pressure, okay? This is how we actually are able to measure what the vacuum is. Right, so the idea. As shown in the image, air is drawn into the vacuum system by the engine-driven vacuum pump. It first goes through a filter, okay, which prevents foreign matter from entering the vacuum or the pressure system. The air then moves through the attitude and heading indicators where it causes the gyros to spin 
as we mentioned before. And a relief valve prevents the vacuum pressure or suction from exceeding prescribed limits. After that, the air is simply expelled overboard or used in other systems, such as for inflating pneumatic desync boots, for instance. It's actually it can be used in many different operations. Okay. Right, so it is important to monitor vacuum pressure during the flight because the attitude and heading indicators may not provide reliable information when the suction pressure is low. So the vacuum or suction gauge, okay is generally marked to indicate the normal range. Some aircraft are equipped with actually a warning light that illuminates when the vacuum pressure drops below the acceptable level. Okay, this is something to take into account, especially for maintenance purposes. Right, so when the vacuum pressure drops below the normal operating range, the gyroscopic instruments may become unstable and inaccurate. This is a very important thing to take into account. Cross-checking the instruments routinely is a good habit to be develop and is actually essential in terms of maintenance for ARC aircraft. Okay, so just going through it again, the vacuum gyroscope system is used to accelerate the rotor of the gyroscope of each indicator. Okay, each indicator will have its own gyroscope and it will be accelerated through the vacuum gyroscope system, right? And it will be through the vacuum pump that sucks the air present in the system, which will move, you know, the indicators, it will move the gyros in the indicators and it will provide the spin, okay? And this will actually provide the stability that we mentioned before and the gyroscopic effect. Uh, this is just, um, just for you to have an idea of what the vacuum pump looks like, okay? The idea is that we take all of the air in the system and we move it constantly in order to keep all the rotors in the gyroscopes in each one of the indicators fully functioning okay this is the idea that i wanted to transmit you can go to next class now